Welcome back again here from Vienna for our third panel. And I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I'm a, I have the feeling that everything we discussed so far brought us exactly to that moment because we have started out the day with talking about how to find your personal and professional why. In our last panel, we talked about how to actually step up as a leader, especially as a young person. And if somehow alongside that journey, you get the feeling of what am I even doing here? Am I qualified at all? Or am I literally the dumbest person in the room? Well, then you are in the right panel because we will be talking exactly about this topic. There is a name for that actually. It's called the imposter syndrome and we will talk about how to overcome it. This session is powered by Google, by the way, which we are very thankful for. And even more thankful, at least I am, is that I don't have to talk about this topic on my own. So I have three great new panelists here with me that share a lot of experience from their side with you, with us. First of all, we have Christiane Noll, Country Manager, Austria at Avanad. We have Christine Antlanger Winter, Country Director from Google Austria. And last but not least, a male colleague of mine, Ali Maloji. Uh, well, which you, I think you have 40 different shops in your life. So I'm just saying you are Ali Maloji. Is yeah, that okay? It's totally Good. okay. Just call me Ali. It's fine. <laughs> now, we will go about this session the same way as we did with the previous two. I will give you a chance to quickly introduce yourself to our audience, tell us who you are and why you are here, what qualifies you to talk about this topic. Um, then we will jump into some of your experiences in depth. And in the end, as always, we will cover some audience questions as well. With that being said, I think we will start with you, Christiane. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Why are you here? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I know. know. I only yeah. have good questions. So we are exactly at the point, you know. So I'm here, I think, you know, because I want to show that it's quite normal, you know, to have the syndrome and everybody, you know, should be aware of that. So it's not something where, we, you know, we should hide and we always try to do the up best. And, you know, when we had the pre-discussion, you said, you know, you know this, yeah? So I know it, you know it, everybody's aware of that. And I think I want to make it more in an official way, yeah? It's not something which should be hidden. So we, we should show, you know, okay, perhaps I'm not, I don't feel at least, you know, that I'm qualified enough. Yeah. So my name is Christiane Noll and I'm the country manager of Avanade in Austria. And I love my job. I love to do it. And um, the only thing I think what I would like to focus for today, it's all about people and about our sensitivities and sensibilities. And so I think that's exactly the right topic. Amazing. Thank you for being here. Christina. Why am I here? I think it's because good of question, right? all of you. Yes, I, I'm very much looking forward to discuss this in this group with you, Ali and Christiane. And I know you from other um, opportunities we had together and I really appreciate um, your opinions about it. So I'm very curious. And um, why I chose uh, to be here and to talk about overcoming the imposter syndrome is because I'm convinced that the most important thing is to talk about it, right? As you said, Christiane, uh, I think that's the cure, if you want to call it like this. And uh, that's why I'm here. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm here because of the free drinks. Yeah, me no. too. <laughs> <laughs> little joke. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not, okay. Uh, thank you for the invitation at first. Um, why I'm here? Um, I'm here because, to be honest, I think it is very important to show young people that you're not alone with that feeling. So when I was younger, when I was in school, when I had my first few jobs, I always thought I'm not good enough. I always thought it's not the right time for me uh, to, to do something new. And in the last years, I had so many jobs in my life. I talked to thousands of people from, from, from all around the world, to CEOs, to people in, in, in so many other jobs, and everyone told me that at one point in your career, there is this moment when you think you're not good enough. You're not so the right person for something. When you talk to hundreds of people, to thousands of people, and everyone is telling you this, you see that this is totally normal. It's part of the game. It's part of the journey. And 
yeah, and I'm here because I think it's a great panel and we should talk about it because especially for young people in the world with so many opportunities out there, I think it's, a, it's the wrong approach to wait for someone telling you, now it's your time, now it's your choice. I think we should show people that when, whenever you want to do it, it's always the right time to do it. Great. Now let's, let's dive into that because I think as we all established, everybody knows this feeling. Um, probably everybody can remember the first time that they experienced it. At least I can do. I still remember my first job uh, straight out of university. You know, first couple of weeks are, you know, you, you, you have like your, your soft intro into the company. And then there was this moment where I had to work on my own project for the first time. And then it was like, oh, fuck, how, how should I even do? Why am I here? Um, this is, by the way, called the imposter syndrome. Um, but I thought, let's not talk about the first experience, but the last. So when was the last time that you felt of having this imposter syndrome? Just now. Now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that will be yeah. a fun panel. Yeah, exactly. yeah, why we are here, you know? I don't think that, you know, we are better than all the others, you know? So person who, can we really sit here and, you know, talk about that, you know, in a smart There's way? There's a football field outside, we can also Perhaps, you, you know, good idea. <laughs> okay. Now let's establish, uh, Christina, you said the best way to overcome that feeling is to talk about it, which yeah. actually we are doing right now. Yeah. Can you share some, some more past experiences? Yeah, the past experiences is a bit influenced that I was lucky enough to have people that I could talk to. So I feel like my journey um, coping with self-doubt Right, because I think there is a lot of differentiation in in the imposter syndrome. Not everything is maybe following the definition of an imposter syndrome, but just uh, bits and pieces of this. This is just something that we always have to deal with, right? I think there is a lot of situations when we're like uh, feeling self doubt uh, for specific things. Um, so this is why I feel this more concrete things that I felt not good enough in a bigger sense have been more in the early stages of my career. And uh, if I think back over the last uh, years, whenever I think there is, you enter a new role, like I started at Google role two and a half years ago, um, it's, it's a natural thing that self-doubt comes with it in, in even um, to a higher extent that than just usually and right sometimes you you have a difficult situation where you still feel like oh maybe maybe i'm just not capable of dealing with it and then i think the journey is of really self-reflection coaching having allies to talk to um that you're like okay this is what i can do this is the skills that i already have maybe there's other skills that i would need for this so having a more reflected way of dealing with this self-doubt i think is then something that i felt very um first grateful for that i was able to to uh, have the circumstances for that and and very powerful to just uh, yeah just um get to your full potential right and i think that's in the end what we what what's it, what it's all about Quick follow-up question. Do you think it's harder for women? No. <laughs> my personal opinion is, and I read a bit about that. I did my research and I found out that there is different opinions it. out there. I Googled, Googled it. <laughs> I hope you Sorry also Googled that. it. <laughs> now, um, that there, there are studies that say that uh, women or young female or young academic women, there's different opinions, uh, are more likely to uh, facing imposter syndrome. And there's other studies that say, that say that it's not related to gender. My personal opinion is that maybe women talk a bit more about it. And men just, mm -hmm. given that I accepted that there is some gender modesty norms, that's how we call it, for example, when we do this, I'm remarkable trainings, there are specific gender modesty norms for women overall. So probably, in my opinion, it's a bit connected to that women show more vulnerability or more easily. Uh, but I, I personally don't think that it's connected to gender. Maybe it's connected a bit to personality or how you've been raised, right? To other factors, but those factors, um, I don't feel that they are so much connected to gender. Personally, I agree, but I have to stay neutral here. That's at least what it says here in my notes. So Ali, as a fellow male, and also, the way I know you, you are a doer personality. I try um, to. Yeah. You try to. 
do you agree with uh, Christina um, that it's actually not easier for us men? I can tell you when I started in my first sales job in a large company, it was a very, very large US company. It was called, it was called Sun Microsystems. Um, when I started there uh, in sales, they were only male and, 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 and everyone there uh, was a man. And the fun part was, so what I found out was that this imposter syndrome, it's everywhere. But when you're a man, you think you shouldn't talk about it. Because more than 10 years ago when I was in that job, there, it, it was a world where, where it was a world for men out there, for the strong men out there. And when everyone's telling you you're in sales, you're the strong guy, you, and your car is the best one out there, um, you have to be the person in the first row fighting for the company. It's not easy to tell, every, uh, yeah, it's not easy so to tell your colleagues that maybe you're afraid of it. Maybe you're not the right person. Maybe it's not the right time for you to do it. So what I found out was that when you're a man, sometimes in society, society is telling you you shouldn't talk about this stuff. But um, from my experience, I can tell you it has nothing to do with gender itself. It has something to do with how you see the world, how you think who you should be in the eyes of other people, and what kind of expectations you have. Uh, so, uh, so when it comes to your job, when it comes to your role, being your father, being your colleague, being a man, being a woman out there, I think it's more uh, so based on that stuff and not based on if you're a man or a woman. I totally agree and I see smiles here. So I take that as an agreement as well. Now coming back to the actual imposter syndrome. Because having the imposter syndrome is one thing. And as you perfectly summed it up, most of the time it just helps to realize, oh, this exists. Mm -hmm. Ah, good, now I can continue. But there are also times where you're actually maybe not quite there yet, where you need further help, either you know, in your personal life or in your professional life. So how do you, you know, find out if what you are feeling right now is the imposter syndrome or actually something more? I know it's a hard question, that's why I asked it. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if the best way is to find it out yourself. I think you, the best way is to reflect with someone, like with a mentor, with a coach. I think that helps a lot to, to really find out what it is, right? Is it, some, is it just a self-doubt itself? Is it some skill you, you want to develop further? What would be the best way how you would be able to resolve the situation from what you already learned and what your journey was? Uh, so I think it's, it's always good to, um, to reflect on it. And that's, in my opinion, done in the best way with someone else. Mm -hmm. We already heard that before in our sessions that mentoring can be such a such a crucial part of this process. So um, I'm interested in how this works in your companies as well. So maybe to 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 phrase it a little bit more um, precise, what do you do as leaders in your company to not only help the younger generation but also to create a culture that it is okay to ask for help? that it's okay to admit that, mm -hmm. well, you're not feeling up to the challenge. Tell me, I will help you. Uh, we just turned it around. You know, we are doing the reverse mentoring and this helps a lot. So I have my mentor and he's much younger than I am. You know, he's more junior, so it's the other way around. And that's the reason I'm learning a lot. And so I can support him and he can support me because he really understands where is my weakness and where are my, my thoughts, you know, and where I'm going to stay. And so that's the reason, you know, it's just turning around and this helps to getting more understanding in our culture in the company. Can you give us a real life example, maybe? Maybe yes. not with names, but... Yes, I have names. my personal uh, mentor, you know, he's an analyst, you know, so he just started one year ago, one and a half year ago in our company. And he's learning me a lot about culture, about what they're expecting, about fears, you know, about, you know, personal stuff, you know, about cultural change, you know, what do they expect, a lot about diversity, of course, and so on. 
and so it's the other way around more you know that i'm you know have my mentor and normally it's you know it's that i'm the mentor yeah so and i think this brings a completely different concept and a diff different view you know how people can see you as a leader in the company and you're more transparent yeah and this is and we're going to make it very very transparent we are very open with that and that's the most important i think it just changed the culture this is an amazing concept i want to i want to work there maybe i'll send you <laughs> yes <laughs> happy to have you <laughs> sina do you have similar um experiences or yeah definitely i really like the concept of this reverse engineering um it reminded me a bit that in google the feedback culture plays a very important role it's more in the center of everything and it's not top down but it's mm -hmm. both ways right mm -hmm. so i definitely over the last two and a half years learned so much uh, right so i'm i'm really grateful for the growth that comes out of these diverse opinions and diverse perspectives right that i think is also an, an one aspect for the imposter syndrome right there is not just one opinion that says how to how something can be done in the best way or if you're the right person there is a lot of different uh, perspectives on that so the feedback and the second thing we we have um a program that is called i am remarkable um that was founded by by a googler by a woman um out of the female empowerment thinking because she thought um women are maybe not that good in talking about their success so the program is really to um have a training that helps you talk about success uh, more uh, confidently and based on data right so it's that there is a saying it's not it's not bragging when it's based on facts and i think that's something also very valuable because um celebrating your success and and just bringing this information to other people on your career journey i think is something very much connected to have a good inner strength to be open for feedback but at the same time know what your contribution is and being able to talk about it right i think on the journey to um, dealing with self-doubt, that's a very important part of it. So I really like the program. It's not just within Google, it's open for everyone. So we also do two trainings here uh, at the Limitless Conference. Um, and I, I really like this uh, very specific program, program very much. I really, really like that because I think this is a huge problem in Austria as well, in our culture, because as soon as you start talking about what you have achieved, most Austrians think, oh, he's bragging again. So I think we really need to, to change that also to establish this failure culture as well. Because if we're not allowed to talk about our successes, successes without bragging, how should we talk about our failures without feeling bad? Um, that's a very good point. Maybe I can add one specific um, aspect because you said like in Austria, maybe we need it much more than in any other country. Uh, it got open to not just women, because as we were talking also about the imposter syndrome, I think some things we find out based on the female empowerment movement, but then all of a sudden it seems like, oh, it's not only women's problem, it's like everyone's <laughs> problem, but we just talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe this is something very val valuable for society. And so I'm remarkable is also open for anyone. So it's not just for women anymore. A truly remarkable program. Um, Ali, you were, you were nodding when Christina uh, mentioned that you realize it's not really a, a female topic most of the time, but it, it affects us uh, as well. So. <laughs> Based on your experiences, and we covered already that you have a lot of different uh, ways, I'm sure you have one or two stories that you can tell in these regards. I think the one thing, and I, uh, to frame it in another way, so what we saw in the last 14 months, our society with the Corona thing uh, coming up was that we have to understand that everyone who surrounds us knows at least one thing we don't know. Because what we see in, these, in this world these days is we have so many problems out there, so many challenges. It's, 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 it's the climate, it's, it's the pandemic, it's so many things out there. And we see on your own, you're, you can't find solutions on your own. You always need other people around yourself. And the thing is, when you work with other people, you have to understand there are things 
in your journey, in your skill set, where you are much, much so better than anyone else around you. But there are also a lot of things where you're not good at. And Most of okay. things, actually. Yeah, and this is okay. And what I saw in the last 12 months was that we found out as a society and also in, in organizations that <laughs> so really everyone is, is really good in one thing or two things. And, and so we should focus on that things. And so when I talk to people in the field of education, for example, when they think about our educational system, about the future of schools, for example. So what Corona has showed us is that we should focus on all of the things where we know that a kid is good in it. Instead of telling them, hey, you made too many, and, and, and you now made too many mistakes, for example. And so before Corona, there were a lot of other topics in our society where people talked about the failure culture, uh, especially in the field of, of all of the uh, very early stage startups. Everyone is talking about failure culture, failure culture. But the Corona thing showed us really what this means, knowing that we have no idea about the future. What we saw in the last 14 months was that we have no idea what's around the corner. And there were people who said, okay, this is part of the game. This is totally natural. We will find out how to tackle all of these problems. And these people, they were totally curious about the possibilities. And on the other side, there were a lot of people in the society who were totally afraid of the future. Because these were people who always thought, okay, I have no idea how to find the right solution to a, so, 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 to, a, to a big problem. And these people also thought they're not the right ones to do it. And what I saw is that there's a new rise of internal entrepreneurship in society where people say, hey, it's never the right time to do it. We have so many um, so problems out there, so many challenges, and maybe I'm the person who's the right one to do it. And when you have this imposter syndrome, now is the right time to talk about it because you see that everyone has it. And because you asked it before, uh, so when was the last time you had it? I can tell you, I'm a father since two years. And the first time when I saw my little girl, I was like, oh shit, it's too early. I have no idea if I'm the right one. I have no idea if I, if I do it in the right way. And, I, and I, I have so many books at home about being a father. But the thing is, you're never in the right position so to say, okay, now is the right time to do it. So imposter syndrome and so what we see in today's world is whenever someone's telling me I have this problem with the imposter syndrome, I have no idea if I'm the right one to do it or not. Uh, I always say, I'm always telling the people, so just do it. Try it on your own, and this imposter syndrome is only a symptom that it's important for you. It's a good symptom for you, but it shouldn't so take you away from your opportunities. As a fellow father of a young child, I can totally agree with you. Um, I still feel the same way when I go to other places where there are other parents, and they all seem so adulty, and I'm like, I'm also here and have a kid, but I don't, I don't what am I doing here? <laughs> so I, I can totally relate. And I think the second part that you mentioned uh, um, in your answer was that most of the things we are talking about today and that we are trying to fight today starts very early on in our educational system. Um, and we had a, we had a um, well, very insightful discussion about that in our um, previous talk. Uh, I, I don't want to force you to, to share that with us, but I think now is the right time. Which one? Which oh, one? the little the little girl in school. All the, all the little girls in school. Oh, the yeah. little... oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know what I see. You know when I, you know I have a lot to do with children. You know with little children, with bigger children. So I'm around. You know, a big family, and uh, I had a terrible experience. You know, for over, you know, for two weeks ago, uh, with a friend of mine. She has a little girl, and she has a friend. And this friend, she was really, she's a really a wild girl. Yeah. It's really loud and she doesn't like to sit and running around and especially school and then not school and so she was completely confused yeah and you know at the end you know the teacher they didn't know to handle that instead of going there and say hey you know we don't know how to handle this situation it's really tough you know she just brought them in this in this front you know and say hey what what i did wrong yeah and everybody was looking at her and everybody was like, hey, oh my goodness. And so that's the way how they turned it around and said, so wonderful um, girls, you know, um, 
that's what I'm here. That's the reason why I'm here, how I can support you and how I can drive, you know, the better way out of it. And this is, I think, for the future, you know, for these little girls, you know, it really changed completely the picture how they have been seen. And so I think, you know, that's what we have to force and we have to support and we have to help them. Terrible story, but great lesson. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but but I think it, it's a huge learning for all the others around, and especially for the parents, and hopefully also for the rest. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Now, once again, I'm jumping to my audience questions now, okay. and the first one is to you, Ali. Actually, okay. Uh, your biography reads like a fairy tale. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, 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 if you want to question. see the, yeah, like a fairy tale, go on. Yeah. What is the one thing that is missing in your biography? The one thing you would like to add? This will, has nothing to do with the topic, I guess. I, 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 think, I think it has. Okay, cool. Love to do, Even better. Because from outside, people always see the success, but they don't see why you have worked so hard on yourself. To be totally honest, um, I'm still at a point in my life where I think Sometimes I have to, I have so to prove people wrong about how they thought about me when I was a kid. Everything I do is because inside of myself there is a little boy who who got hurt in a very very hard way when he was a kid because he learned he's a refugee, he's a stutterer, uh, his name is the wrong name in Austria, and so on. And this little kid is still fighting to be seen out there and to help other kids to avoid the problems I challenge in my life. I really fight for people out there, not only kids, also adults, who have all of the challenges I have seen in my life in front of them. And this imposter syndrome is something where I, re I, I, I think until I die, I will fight to show people that this imposter syndrome, it shouldn't stop you from who you are. So this means, and and to be honest, I'm not there. So if someone is asking me, is there something so so missing in your life? I say, yeah, there is this picture of the world where I truly believe that no matter who you are and where you're born, you always should have a life where you know you're good enough. But I truly believe this is a very hard fight. I'm fighting for it. And I don't, and until, and, and as long as I'm alive, I'm working on that. So the one thing which is missing in my life is this big picture of the world I have. And I don't think that I will ever get there as long as I'm alive because it's a big journey. Because maybe for, there is no humanity. there. Hmm? Maybe because there is no there at all because it's a exactly. journey. Exactly. So therefore, for the rest of my life, I, I will work on that because this thing is missing yeah. still in society. Being there probably means you're dead because you're at the end of the road. Yeah. Oh, this is a and this is okay, but, but, but it's, it's totally okay. 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 Yeah, so, so, okay. so please don't cry, yeah, everyone no, no. Uh, at home. This Except it's totally a terrible okay. when it's a terrible accident, then then you can cry, but otherwise it's okay to die. It, this is all the part okay. of the world. Think, okay, now we got that. Yeah. 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 We, <laughs> let's go back to the topic. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> a question from Mariana to all. So feel free. Um, if you want to answer that. And I think that's very, it's a very interesting point of view, especially um, when it comes to the some imposter syndrome. She says and asks that, I'm a person that needs confirmation from others to feel self-confident. Mm -hmm. How to overcome this? And is this part of the imposter syndrome? Yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure if it's part of the imposter syndrome. Um, my, my research was probably not too intense. I, what, I, what I found out, and this I found very interesting, it, there, there is um, Professor Valerie Young, I think, Ameri an American um, a subject matter expert. I don't know what, what her profession is. Uh, she at least defines several uh, different types of imposter syndrome, right? There is the perfectionist, and then there is the super women and superman and, and others. Um, so I think that's important, but I think this problem of needing external confirmation uh, for, for feeling confident, I think this is for sure something that um, plays a very important role and probably it's the same like with imposter syndrome everyone knows it but 
we don't really talk about it. <laughs> and I think it's a journey to, to work on that, right? How can you get your inner strength or how can you get better in your inner strength and not being dependent so much on an external uh, confirmation? I would like to add something. I think to love yourself, you know, it's the biggest learning, you know, in your entire life, you know, mm. that you, I'm okay like I am, you know, you don't get more, you know. So that's how I am and to be authentic. Yeah, I think this would help a lot, mm. all of us. And um, getting confirmation from outside. <laughs> I do it all of the time because there are parts of my life where I'm really confident, where I know how to play the game. And it's especially in these fields where I really do things over and over again. And when you do things over and over again, you get confident. Confidence is not something you, you are getting from your food or from TV stations. You get it because you do something over and over again and you know, okay, I can do that. I'm good in it. But there are also parts in my life where I'm totally not confident about something. But the good thing is... I have my wife, I have my team, and you can ask every one of them. There are parts in my life where I always, oh, so where I really asking them, hey guys, is this okay to do this? Because I have no idea about it. So I can tell you, take a look at your life. I don't think that you need confirmation in every part of your life. And in these fields of where you think you need confirmation, this is totally normal. This is, this is, uh, and, and, and last year I have met a president of another country in Europe and he and also he told me that uh, he is in his job for more than I think two or three years and he, he has this imposter syndrome and he is still asking his team some some things because sometimes he has no confidence in some yeah in some areas so this is totally normal I just thought if we should get political here but probably it's better if we not, if we if we, if we uh, leave that out um, because I mean I think it would be nice if more politicians would show that they don't know everything and don't have all the answers. But let, let's keep that topic aside for now. I fully agree. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> Thank you. But we don't have this problem in Austria. No, we don't. Now we're talking about it and we should. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Next question. No, because this is also a really good question. Um, similar to, to the feeling of uh, confirmation, someone asked how to overcome the feeling of comparison because you Ali the, the question is not uh, it done yet because you previously said it's okay to to know that you're not you don't know everything but and this is what the person asks the more you realize what you actually don't know the more difficult it is feeling like knowing enough would you agree I would uh, so if you realize that there are a lot of things you have no idea of this is okay but it's not an invitation just saying, okay, I have no idea. If you want to become better, if you want to grow, then your job is to find an answer to that. If you have no idea about, I don't know, you're working with different generations, you're in the field of leadership, you have no idea about young people. Of course you can say I have no idea, but it's your job to, to find some answers for yourself. So in that moment where you say, okay, I want to become better, I, there's this lack of information, I do something against it. In that moment, you don't need comparison with other people because you are doing something. The problem with comparison is always when I, so when I coach people and it comes to the field of comparison, it's always in, the, in these moments where you don't know who you are. In that moment where you do things because you think you have to do, in these moments you're open for comparison. And comparison is something, I think it's, total to, it's, it's, all, it's also normal in society, but when you know who you are and why you do the things you do, then comparison is helping you to become better. If you're lost, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know why you do the things you do, then comparison is, is one of the hardest things in your life. So what I can tell people is, if you see you are comparing yourself with others, focus on who you are, become better in your job, ask yourself why you do the things to you, and then this comparison stuff is, is helping you to become better. And I think you always have to think also, it's very, very important with whom you're gonna compare yourself. Huh? Totally, yeah, totally. Because otherwise you, you are lost, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, so, 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 so just to add this, for example, so when I was a kid, we were really poor. So I grew up in a refugee camp. We, 
we we had no money to be honest so everything i had until i was 10 or 11 years old it was some clothes and and, and some stuff from our neighbors and other friends and i always said to my parents hey i also want to have these nike shoes i also want to have that stuff these brands and when i grow up i realized i was i was comparing the wrong things i was comparing someone who was born here in austria in a family with money speaking the language here having a foundation having family having friends and i and I was in this, in this, yeah, and, and I was comparing these peoples with myself. And therefore, I think so. What you have just mentioned is the most important thing focus on who you compare, uh, who you are comparing yourself with. This is really helping you. Now, we have time for one or two final questions. And one that I get on my amazing Samsung tablet is for you, Christina. Um, because in your opening statement, you said the most important thing is to, to talk about it. May it be in a personal um, life or in the professional level. But how do you actually make sure to put it on the agenda that you put action into the words and create an environment that everybody can be open about it? That's a very good question. That's why it's the last one. Um, yeah, okay, fantastic. So I have the pressure to have a very good <laughs> yes. statement at the end. That's Imposter wonderful. syndrome, here you go. Um, let me think um, of an answer. So uh, I think one action that we took is that we are here on this panel to just uh, reflect on what we are already doing and, and why this is good. Um, some one thing uh, comes into my mind also because I was interested, as I heard of the syndrome quite some years ago in in the German um, uh, meaning of Hochstapler syndrome, which sounds even more fancy. Oh yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, it's there. And now I realized over the last one or two years, in my perception, there was an increase in awareness around it, right? Triggered by a lot of TED talks and and people just creating awareness around it. And um, I think for me personally, this panel has been the start of taking this series again and like, hey, yes, it's there. I know it for years, but maybe it's really something that we should uh, uh, go deeper into it. So I will take it as an as a initial start, maybe, to think about what I can contribute or what we can contribute in Austria as Google, for example. Maybe we can marry it with the Unremarkable, as I said. I think that could be probably a good starting point. I don't know, what are your ideas, Ali and Christiana? I would say, so we should celebrate the syndrome because of, um, how to say it? So whenever you have the syndrome, it means there is something where you at the beginning of your learning curve. And for example, when I started becoming an entrepreneur more than 10 years ago, before the time, there was no real imposter syndrome in my life because I always played it safe. Always, I did the thing when I knew, okay, this is not new for me. Uh, I was my comfort zone, to say it in that way. And whenever you're stepping out of your comfort zone, whenever you're going a new direction, you're learning something, in the beginning you have no idea about the journey. And in that moment, the imposter syndrome comes up, totally. So it means the imposter syndrome of our society means that it's the beginning of a new journey. And when you see it like that, like a little kid who starts to walk, who starts to talk, they have no idea that there's something like walking or talking but they do it because there is this curiosity. They have no idea what could go wrong, possibly. And whenever there is this syndrome out there, also in a society, in an organization, in your culture, in your team, from my point of view, this is a good sign because it means that there is someone learning something new. They have no idea if it's possible. And for me as a, as a leader in my teams, in my startups, it is really important to show them I also got this syndrome. I also have it. It's totally normal. It's also part of my life. And when you do that, you see that all of your colleagues, they, they're not afraid of talking about it. They say, okay, it also happens to our boss, to our leaders, to someone else. And then it's, it's a common thing. And you have to do it. And, and you have to deal with it as a common thing, a thing. And then you are creating a culture and a, and a space where people can grow in it. I think there's... No better. I start on Tuesday my next management meeting with this, discussing that. Wow. And being very transparent and action, open. Yeah. So I think, you know, then I will learn a lot. I will wow. come back to you. I'll let you know. There is no better yeah. way to end this panel than with a precise action that came out of it. 
I hope not only you guys learned a lot from talking with each other, but also our participants in front of the screens. That brings us to the end of this session. I'm very thankful that all of you were here. Um...